Hi everyone, it's Jason here at Horology Middle East. Today we'll be looking at a watch that Omega first introduced at Basel World 2015. It's called the Globemaster Coaxial Master Chronometer. It's actually Omega's first watch to receive Master Chronometer certification from the Swiss Federal Office of Metrology. For watches to gain this certification, they actually have to go through eight different tests and pass each one, and only then are they given the stamp of approval. When you buy one of these watches that are certified master chronometer, what you get is an information card from the factory that gives you an access code. And you can actually use this to log into Omega's website to uh, find out exactly how your watch performed in each of those uh, different tests. It's actually a really cool way to uh, find out exactly how your watch performs out of the factory. Now, if you're a fan of constellations or you know a little bit about the history, you'll be able to see that a lot of the design traits on this watch are actually borrowed from older constellation models. This fluted bezel, for example, that you can see around the entire dial, that's actually taken from a constellation that came out in 1968. And if you look closely, even at the dial, if you can see it, um, this pie pan kind of shape here that almost touches into the indexes, that's actually taken from a model that was released back in 1952. Even here, just above the date window, if you can see it, the little constellation star here, that's been used on constellation models even in recent times. So given all the traits that it shares with all the constellations, it's no surprise that Omega is actually positioning this as part of the constellation family. In total, the company is going to be releasing 11 different references and uh, all of them will be 39mm, but you will get a different types of materials that you can buy the watch with. So you can get stainless steel as this one is. You can also get the Omega Sedna gold, uh, yellow gold. And you also have two different options of dial. So this one is obviously, as you can see here, uh, a blue dial, but there's also a silver opaline dial with some of the other watches. The nice thing about this dial is that if you actually, I don't know if you can see it, uh, the indexes as well as the Omega symbol, the name, and even the constellation star, all of those are actually applied. So it's a nice, it's a nice uh, touch to the dial. It gives it a bit of depth. If you look at it from the side, you can actually see how those things raise up a little bit. The other nice thing that I like with this watch is the uh, this bezel, which gives it a lot of personality. It's actually made out of very hard material called tungsten carbide. And Omega says this uh, this metal probably ensure that the watch retains its frosty finish for quite some time. It feels really hard, but uh, at the same time, really uh, feels good under your skin. You know, it's not sharp or uh, anything of the sort. Inside this watch is a new caliber. It's actually an Omega in-house caliber. They've been doing in-house for some time now. Uh, this one is called the Caliber 8900. It's an automatic movement, as you can see, and it offers 60 hours of power reserve. The watch itself, well, if you look at it from the side here, you can see it's not a very thick watch. It's certainly not as thick as some of Omega's recent Speedmasters, you know, the 9300 family with um, those, those can be quite thick and sit a little bit high off the wrist. This one though, it seems quite uh, slim for, in, in comparison to those watches rather. So because of that, putting it on, it actually, it's actually quite comfortable to wear. Let me just get it on for you here if I can, one hand. Yes, so it's a butterfly clasp. You put it on on one side, then you put it on the other side. And uh, the nice bracelet that you see here, the whole bracelet has got this kind of brushed finish. Um, it doesn't have the center polished links that you find on the Seamaster 300. I naturally prefer that because the center links on the Seamaster 300 kind of show scuffs very easily. It's high polished, so you know you can scratch it really easily and then you can kind of see them whenever you look at it. So this should look quite nice for years. Um, this is a really nice bracelet overall. Uh, the buttons feel great here, little Omega symbol here. On the hand, it actually wears quite well. As you can see, um, it's a 39mm watch, but it seems to wear a little bit bigger on my wrist. You know, in fact, if I compare it to some of my other Omegas, it almost seems like it's a bigger size, but it's actually 39 millimeters. It sits really well on the wrist. I'm really pleased with the bracelet, which I thought might be a bit of a hair puller, which is an issue with someone like me. It actually doesn't pull hair, even when the watch is moving around like this. So that's a nice, uh, nice thing to kind of have. Watch isn't very heavy. I've been wearing it for quite some time now and uh, you, you don't really feel the weight. It's got presence, of course, on your wrist, but it's not 
very heavy you don't feel uh, like you've got this big chunk of metal on your hands so that's really nice as well you um, you're kind of obliged to keep it on almost throughout the day uh, the, the only one thing that I I've noticed about the bracelet which I like overall it doesn't actually offer if you can see it here it doesn't actually offer any sort of uh, micro adjustment so sizing into your wrist will mean taking off links so it's not something I mean you, you can try and do it at home but if you're like me you probably want to take it into the boutiques to prevent damage to do the bracelet overall it's an attractive watch I've really enjoyed wearing it over the last few days uh, I've been waiting for it for a long time and I have to say it doesn't disappoint at all I've seen the silvery opaline version as well but uh, to me personally I find this blue dial the best option it really changes color depending on the light and you know when you take it outdoors especially in a bright place like Dubai you can really see the color pop um, everyone's everyone who's seen it rather has asked quite a few questions about this watch so that's a um, nice little bonus if, uh, if you enjoy talking about your watches as I do um, the one thing I will say with the dial which overall I like it I really like it a lot um, it's not exactly something that I would consider a dress watch, even though I've seen some people say it, you know, it has got kind of a dress watch look to it. It's it's not quite thin enough to be classified a dress watch. And um, even if you look at the dial, there's probably a bit too much of text, you know, with the coaxial master chronometer text and date window. I mean, most uh, dress watches don't have a date window and will probably just have the brand name and maybe the name of the um, watch. But uh, yeah, besides that, there's absolutely nothing to complain about. It's a great watch, um, certainly worth waiting for since I saw it at Basel World. Uh, the good thing is it's now on sale in Dubai and uh, probably most of the Middle East. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed this review, please click like and share. And uh, if you want, please have a look at the website to find out the full review. Thanks.